Hey, good morning. It's always such a privilege to be able to share some thoughts with you today. You know, if you haven't met, my name is Daniel, and I'm part of the team of Resurrection Life, and I get to serve you along with my family. You know, before I start the message, I want to show a photo of my family. This is Jen. These are my four amazing kids, and I'm so thankful that I get to be their dad and I get to be her husband, you know. Besides being a dad, besides being a son, besides being a brother and a husband, you know, I also run a creative agency that I started 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. 20 years ago. And we serve thousands of clients around the world, from startups to multinationals. So if you're expecting a preacher today, I'm sorry to disappoint you. If it's, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a preacher. I just want to share what God has placed in my heart and what I've learned throughout this journey. You know, so many times, a lot of friends and, and even family members come up and ask me, you know, hey, Dan, how, how do you do it? How do you, how do you balance life? How do you balance, you know, your work? How do you balance your, your ministry, the ministry? How do you balance family time and, you know, looking after the kids, being a, being a husband, and a lot of times, I can't, I can't give a straight answer because, you know, it, it's not just one thing. It's not just one thing, and it, it's very hard to give a concise answer, a soundbite answer to, to this whole thing. And so I thought about it, and I, and I wanted to share and take some time to prepare this message to, to, to share with you and, I guess, to whoever's listening, you know, some, some ideas that I've learned along the way, right? And I really thank God that... that He's brought me through this journey, even, even with the business, the, the, to allow me, I don't even have a design degree, and some people say I can't draw, to be able to serve clients around the world and touch people with the gift that God has given me and, and the passion that He's put in my heart. And I really want this to come across even as I share. You know, I don't want to share just theory. I don't want to share just, just Bible knowledge, but I want to share life application. But the things that I want to share today are straight from the Bible. Okay, so the title of today's message is The Power of Ten. The Power of Ten. You know, so, so what is the significance of the number ten? You know, ten in the Bible can represent a sense of completion or perfection. You know, it also represents God's authority and government on earth. You know, ten is a nice round number. If you think about it, if you get 10% return on your investments, that's pretty good, right? And if you follow soccer, if you play football, um, you know, the number 10 is usually allocated for the best players. You know, God gave us 10 commandments. He gave us 10 fingers, 10 toes. And, you know, 11 fingers would have been weird. 12 would have been too many. So I wanted to share two points around this nice number of 10, the power of 10, and how... If you, if you take it home today, if you apply it, I can almost guarantee you multiple full return in your productivity, you know, in your relationship with each other, with your spouse, with your siblings, right, with, with workmates, um, if you run a business, if you apply these principles, which are straight from the Bible, right, which are straight from the Bible, you will see increase profits, increase productivity, right? And I, I really hope that this blesses you today. So are you ready? You know, and, and why am I so confident that if you apply, apply this consistently, that you will get, see these results? Because I myself have done this, and I've seen many people around me who have done it too. I've seen it dozens of times. Right, so it's not just theory, it's not just head knowledge. You know, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I love the Bible. I love the Word, and I love to, to read it and see how it applies to everyday life. Okay, you know, knowing, knowing the Word and knowing all the Bible knowledge in the world is not much of a help unless you apply it, unless you accept it and believe it and align your faith with what God has intended for you. So if you're taking notes, write this down. Take 10. This is the first point. One of two points, okay? Take 10. Essentially what it means is, is, is taking action. Essentially what it means is, is 
you make the time, take, say 10 minutes. 10 minutes, take action. What you've learned, take action. Faith without deeds is dead. You know, in James 2.26, the brother of Jesus, he wrote this, you know, without deeds, you know, faith without deeds is dead. You know, learn as much as you can, learn as much as you want, but make sure you apply it. Make sure you apply it. And this is, this is the crux of it all, okay? So, so how can 10 minutes, 10 minutes, how can 10 minutes change your life? How can 10 minutes change the trajectory of your relationship, you know, with, with your spouse, with your kids, with your workmates? How can 10 minutes add years to your life? You know, in Colossians, it, it talks, he talks about redeeming the time. The word deem means to own and to redeem means to regain, to own. How can 10 minutes now, done consistently, add years to your life? You're redeeming time. You're buying back time. You know, if you, if you develop habits, godly habits, spiritual habits, you know, you develop that, that, that more intimate walk with God. 10 minutes, right? And, and here, are, here are some examples, all right? For me, for me, um, when I first started, you know, 10 minutes was a long time. 10 minutes was a long time. But I know that as I developed in my walk, as I walked with God, you know, getting to that first 10 minutes, you know, put your phones away, you know, it, when it came to the three-minute mark, I'm not sure, I, I'm sure none of you guys would do this. You know, three-minute mark is, man, I've been here for so long, you know, I need to check my messages in case I, I got a client, I, I got this, I got that, you know, but it, it is a discipline. Take 10, 10 minutes. For me, I trick myself. I like to trick myself, especially when it comes to exercise. You know, early in the morning when it's cold nowadays, and it's like, I just say, I'll just do 10. I'll just do 10 minutes, 10 minutes. You know, by the time you get down, by the time you get changed, by the time you start, you know, by the time you reach the 10 minutes, you go, ah, I can do another five minutes. I can do, I can do another, you know, four or five minutes. And before you know it, you're redeeming time. You're putting action. You know, importantly, is 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 going back to the Word of God. I remember a story. Um, it's not a story. This is a this is a testimony. A few 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 months ago, we were in search of a particular uh, lawyer or a legal consultant, and we had two or three in mind. Okay, and we kind of shortlisted it two or three, and I really wanted to seek God. And, you know, over the last few days, over the last few weeks, you know, I, I've been trying to cultivate that, that time with God and develop that habit of seeking Him. And this particular morning, it, it was the same thing. I said, God, you know, if, if this is the right guy, if this is the right person, you know, you, you have to make it clear. I don't want to choose the wrong person. And I set aside time. It, it was a bit more than 10 minutes, but it started with 10 minutes. It started with 10 minutes, and I just seeked God. I just said, God, you know, lead me to the right person. And the funny thing was, as soon as I finished, you know, I was at, at the church office. You know, it was a Saturday morning, I remember. And there was no one else. I, I kind of drove out. And on top of the road, it's, a, it's quite a big traffic light. And of all times, it was random. You know, I was stuck at the lights. There was a car right on my left side in front of me. And this guy had his hand out, right? He had his hand out the window, and he was just kind of leaning in there. And, and on the name of his hand was tattooed, the name of one of the lawyers. This is the right guy. And, and he was the right guy. He, he was the right guy for that situation. You know, a lot of times, um, I encourage you to really develop this habit. Take 10. Say to the person next to you, take 10. You know, if you're running a business, taking 10 minutes to plan. If you're a student, taking 10 minutes to plan. You know, we all have to-do lists. We all have to-do lists every single day. 10 minutes to plan. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, if you want to cut down a tree, you know, you sharpen the axe. You sharpen the axe. And planning does that for you. Planning does that. Don't just plan the list of things to do, but plan out what you want to accomplish on that day, right? I know these are super practical tips, and I really pray that it, it helps you 
and blesses you. You know, so many times we know all the verses, but unless we put them to practice, unless, unless we really sit down and do it, we won't see the fruitfulness or, or, what, or the potential that God has put in us, right? You know, Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. Guess what the verse is that? That's John 10, 10, right? Take 10 minutes to pray, and especially when it comes to reading the Bible. You know, I know some of us find it hard, and we don't know where to start. And even 10 minutes of reading, is, it seems like a lot. But here, here's a tip. Here, here's a powerful tip. Just start with 10 words. Start with 10 words. Sit down, put away distractions, and just start with 10 words. You'll be surprised at what God can do when you focus on Him. You know, develop that time. Develop that habit every day. You know, if, 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 if family is your priority, if you love your family, 10 minutes a day, invest in them. If not, someone else will take your time. If you don't, if you don't live with intentionality, someone else will take your time. Something else will take your time. So how can 10 minutes change the trajectory or of your relationships, right? How can 10 minutes save years of heartache? And I want to share this, this little point. Have you ever, in times of, say for example, when you have an argument with your spouse or with your partner or with your friend or with someone that you love, and in the heat of the argument, you say something that you later regret? You know, so many times I've met so many people, you know, they hold on to those words, words that sometimes you may mean in your heart but not supposed to say out loud, but in the heat of the moment, you let it slip. So next time, think about this. Take 10 minutes. Calm down before you say anything. Calm down before you reply to that email. Take 10 minutes, right? Take a deep breath, step away. You never know. Those 10 minutes could save you years of heartache. You could save someone years of heartache. You know, the, sometimes they, they, they go through their lives and all, the re, all they remember are the words that were said. Long after the, the, the reason for the argument is over, all they remember were the words. So t- take that time. You know, 10 minutes can save a relationship. 10 minutes can restore a relationship. 10 minutes can enhance a relationship. When was the last time you spent 10 minutes of undivided attention with your kids or with your spouse? Without phones, without distractions. When was the last time we did that? And this is a, a, a good challenge for, for you, for me, to, to, to remember. We prioritize what we value. Take 10. All right, so the second point I want to share today is on the powerful principle of tithing. All right, before you turn off the video, before you click on one of the recommended videos on the side of your YouTube sidebar, I just want to stress that tithing goes beyond just the financial aspects or, or you know, what what is commonly known, you know, around when I say the word tithing and offering. Right? You know, this is a principle that God laid in place more than 5,000 years ago, and it is still as powerful today as it was back then. You know, I, I love what Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe said about tithing and offering. He says, tithing and offering is God's free management training system. God's free management training system. And I, I really agree with this, and I can see this. Yeah, and it, it kind of burdens my heart that I, I have to share this, but I really want to share it because I've seen so many families, I've seen so many relationships that have been strained due to finances. A lot of times it's, a lot of times it's, it's, of, it's not their fault, but many times, sad to say, it's mismanagement. Um, I've seen how this principle has enabled us to, to kind of grow from a, a single one man start up to, to like a seven-figure agency. And I can really say that it is God's faithfulness. You know, for someone who didn't get a design degree 
someone who, who, who you know, some would say can't even draw, uh, to be allowed, and, and, you know, God has favored the company. It, it really is a miracle. And I really do believe that it's because of the principles that He's given to us in the Bible. And I want to stress this point. God doesn't need your money. Believe it or not, He doesn't need your money. And God is not like a slot machine where, you know, people say you give this and you get this. I, 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 I don't believe God is like that, you know, that kind of a slot machine uh, theory. But I do believe that God rewards faithfulness. You know, so many times Jesus taught about the managers. You know, the, who, they were responsible for the different talents. You know, the guy who got the one bag, you know, and how he was responsible and he was a wise steward. You know, some may argue and tell you that tithing is, is old school, it's old fashioned, it's not relevant in, in the new covenant. Um, you know what? And, and if they don't want to tithe, that's okay with me. It doesn't bother me. I feel that tithing is my privilege. You know, I, I've seen it again and again how God is faithful to his word. Right, how God is faithful, and, and, and the fact that it's a, it's a training, it's a management training, it's a stewardship training. You know, if, if he can't trust you with that 10%, you know, how is he going to entrust you with more, to be responsible with more? You know, personally, I showed you a picture before of my family. You know, I've got a daughter, right, Abby. And if in the days to come, she brings home a gentleman who wants to court her or, you know, marry her. You know, I'll make sure that he's a tither before I give him the blessing. Because I know that if someone, if a man can trust God and seek God first, the rest will fall into place. And personally, I would not invest in or go into a partnership with anybody who I know is not a tither or who does not believe in tithing or seeking or putting God first in this way. You know, I want to I wanna conclude this short message with a thought, right? I, I know that if 10 people are listening to this, only 10% will do something about it, right? If 100 people are listening to this, I know only about 10%, around 10 people do something about it. And that's why it's not hard to, to stand out nowadays. All right. And, and I encourage you today. I want to inspire you and hopefully motivate you, you know, no matter what age you are. You know, if you're young, you, know, you have the time, you have the energy, do it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. You know, my heart is that I, I don't just live long but I live productively and I live purposefully. And I pray that for you too. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, one of my favorite verses, one of my top favorite verses is in Proverbs 22, verse 4. You know, it says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, in life. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. You know, I've met many wealthy people who have a high net worth, but they're broke on the inside. You know, don't, don't, pursue, don't pursue money. This is one thing I learned. Don't pursue money. If you do things well, if you serve people well, you know, the money will come. Right? If you start a business with the sole pursuit of just making money, it's not going to last. And, you know, I've worked with thousands of business people and I can kind of gauge you know, when, they, when they start the business what their motives are. If their motives and their principles are not firm in the beginning, I know that they're going to have a hard time running this business. Right? Starting a business is easy. Starting a business is exciting. But it's, it's, it's a long play. It's a long play. So I pray that today, you know, that we would take 10, 10 minutes to change your life. You know, 
come back to the principle of tithing. You know, not just your finances, but your time with God. 10%. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for this time. I want to thank you for this privilege that, that I get to share some thoughts, Lord Father. God, I just pray that these words be clear and concise and that they will penetrate, Lord Father God, the hearts and the minds and it will cause us to take action. Lord, I thank you. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, direct us. And I just want to thank you for your empowerment and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you guys.